Hello and welcome to the Roots of Reggae podcast, presented by Jetstar Music. Episode 3, Gregory Isaacs. I need your love, not just for an hour. I need a permanent lover. Where and when were you born? Well, I was born in 1950 in Western Kingston, Denham Town. In Denham Town? Yeah. You grew up there? Yeah, yeah. And were you raised by your mom and dad? Or? Yeah, I was born by my mother, right? My mother father, me. And what about brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have one brother, you know? Um, is that Rudy? Mm, uh, no, not Rudy, right? Yeah. My brother's name is Gyro. They call him Gyro. Gyro? Yeah. He's older than you? No, younger. Younger. So you're the oldest? Two. Of two. Mm. Okay. Um, was your mother working in those days? Or? Yes, yes. What did she do? Huh? What kind of work was she doing? Well, I didn't know the work she was doing different. You know, so you know, I want to interview about me different than my mother. Okay. You know? So how is it that you started singing? Well, from early childhood, different thing. My friend used to tell me that I'm good. You understand? Like school concert and those things. Yeah. What kind of songs would you sing? Well, Sam Cooke, What is Red In, those were my favorite, huh? Yeah? And you got exposed to those on the radio or what? Yeah, on the radio. Did you end up in the Concords first or what, what happened? What was yeah, well, well, I started, I, I did some song with the Concords, right? But I started out first, single with a song called Another Art here. Another Art? Yeah. Produced by? Me and Winston Sinclair, you know? Winston Sinclair. Yeah, Who but is the, he? You know, I used to grow up like the music business, though. Right? He sings the next side, I sing one side, right? True, true, those that, days. That came out on what label was it? Well, it was African music, but it brings out on blank, you know? Oh, those I days. see. Yeah, true, I true. see. Yeah. And, and you're saying that's before the Concords? Yeah, yeah. So, how many tunes did you do before you started singing the Concords? Well, a few. A few? Yeah. Any others that come to mind? Like Dancing Floor. On the Prince Buster label those time, yeah, yeah, and I started singing for Rupert Edwards. Yes. Um, That's where the Concords come in. Oh, it was a group for Rupert? No. Yeah, Rupert Edwards group. I did something like Don't Let Me Suffer Lad. Quite a few, you know. Who else was in that group? A Britain called Bramwell, one named Penro. Um, not, not Bramwell Brown or... No, 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 no. Some no. other guy. True, yeah. Um, and what, they were just people that Rupi... Had no, we came from, they, they all came from Western Kingston. So they were just like neighborhood people? Yeah, true, true. They hadn't been in any group before? I don't no, know. no, no. And um, you were the lead? Or you all? Yeah, I did lead. Yeah, I was lead too. Okay. When you say African Museum, those times, we was it you and Earl Dunkley? Or it was just... No, well, really, the front of the scene, we sit down and discuss the front of the, I produced a song with Earl Dunkley called Movie Star, right? Which was a cover version. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was a hit, the front of the scene, that's all. We make the African Museum label, right? I will don't get a label called Silver Ring, and I had African Museum scene. Okay. So we just spar together. That name, African Museum, mm -hmm. where did that inspiration come from? What, what were you trying mm -hmm. to portray with that name? Well, to be frank, differently, I just see the logo, you have a drum on it, and a symbol of Queen Nafateti, the daughter of Ramesses. So you said this is what I want? Uh, yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah? Same, true. Okay. So the Congo represent Africa. Uh-huh. And Queen Africa, that must be data. Yeah, true. And you just said African Museum. Yeah, true, 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 true. It's a fascinating name, I true, have true. to say. So, yeah, so you're saying the Concords thing didn't really last too long? Or too long, no. I did, just did a couple of songs with them different, you know? Uh-huh. And still on those. And yeah, so long, hmm? then you went off on your own? Yeah. Pretty much full time? Yeah, because from the beginning, I was a solo singer. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That, that stuff that you did that ended up on Buster's label, how did it end up on his label? Did you do it for him? Or yeah, I did a one song for him from the scene, that's that dancing floor from the scene. And I started singing for Rupert before. Uh -huh. I did a song like Each Day, Poor Lonely Man, and quite a few, you know? Uh -huh. so. And then what, you went down to Buster and had an audition? Or, or no, I did a one song for Prince Buster's scene. He asked me to do it. He asked you to do yeah, it? Yes, yeah, because my friend was a close friend of his, you know? Who was that? Jim Brown. Oh, um, Jim Brown the DJ or Jim Brown the uh, enforcer guy? Jim Brown, yes, yeah, Jim Brown. The enforcer guy. True. I see. So that that was the link between yeah, you? Yeah, true, true, yeah. Yeah? And you knew him from the same neighborhood? Or? Yeah, we grew up, we grew up Western Kingston, no? From the runnings, yeah, true, basically. True. No, Western Kingston, you, you grew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
I'm leaving. But I will return. went on your own fully and you were doing African Museum and other things. What about when did you, when does the GG connection come in? Well, Where after it? I did a song for myself on the African Museum called My Only Lover, you know? Yes. See? Yes. yes. That's what I really like, you know? And Rupi yeah. Edwards had no involvement in that? No, 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 no. You know, that was African Museum. Yeah. You know, they didn't think then. Did some song for Rupi Edwards different the scene till I started spreading my wings different the scene. Went to yeah. GG's and did some songs with Gigi, like Love is Overdue. Yes. You understand? W would you say Love is Overdue is really the song that kind of burst you out big time? Or no, I would say the song called All I Have is Love. I did that before Gigi, see? Right. That was on the Phil Pratt label. Right, right. You understand? And was that again, did Phil Pratt just come to you and say, come do a tune, or? Yeah, the, 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 between Phil Pratt and Pete, a guy called Pete Weston, you know? Oh, yeah. So, oh, so, 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 yeah, so, so, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With that song, um, there's that, there's that, 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 yeah. that horn, that yeah. horn arrangement, mm -hmm. who was doing that? Mm -hmm. All I have is love. So again, I don't quite remember the land and the front thing, I told Frank, you know. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Can you remember as well on, um, uh, my one and only lover, like, um, this, like this keyboard part? Like yeah, well, I put it at one the front of the scene, a youth named Glenn Adams. Oh, yeah, that's Glenn Adams on there? Yeah, scene. And it named Reggie. Yeah. The yeah. guitar, the front of the scene. Yes. Family man. Yes. Play the bass, you know? Yes. And Carly play the drum. Yeah. And you recorded that where? Huh? Where did they where did you record that? At that at, at Randy's studio. Randy's. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Errol Dunkley was telling me about the black Cinderella and yeah. doing that and Jimmy Radway. Yeah, well after we did that the front of the scene, Dun Dunkley did we start out start out his label, uh -huh. Silver Ring. And we did some song, he did some song for himself, I did some song on the same session. And them thing, they cover another version called Darling Who and them thing, the same. Oh, yeah. Which he gave to Rupert or something like that. Yeah. So Rupert was, then, Jimmy now, Radway. Yes. Jim Radway now, see him? He was a member of the same era. Uh -huh. Yes. He wrote that song. Oh, he wrote and, it. And gave, gave it to Eric Duncan to, uh, to sing. Yeah. So did you have any involvement or you were just... No, around? I didn't have no involvement in that. Now then, Big you told me, that Jimmy Radway wanted to record him, but yeah. that you jumped the gun and yeah, yeah. to it. So how, did, how did that happen? How did it go? What well, see, into the vibe, oh, I circulate, you know, in the mm -hmm. ghetto, the front, I move along the front, the scene, I have a good friend, the front, the scene, and I said, big because I used a lot of talent, you know, see, and boom, I, he did the version of the song, movie star version called Movie Man, you know? Yes. I brought yes. up the first song with him. Yeah. What would you say appealed to you about his style? What, what was it that stood out? Yeah, well, it, him come and blast off the front of the scene, to be frank, the front of the scene. Okay. Because he wants to take on to it, take on to him, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's very great deal. So you, 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 start, you, know? you just saw him like on Tipperton or something, or? Yeah, yeah, I used to play Tipperton sound and them little things, the scene, and what friend who came to cook all the food for me and everything there. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. Okay. And then going up a, a bit later again, so like after the Gigi's thing, and then after yeah. your own thing, then you end up, what about stuff like Sacrifice? Yeah, well, that was on the, Africa, on the African Museum label scene. That is sacrificed the front of the scene. I mean, again, what would you say about inspiration behind songs like that? Well, it's an inbound concept, you know, scene. Mm -hmm. That's come from it in the front of the scene. I see myself as a messenger who deliver a message to the people, right? Mm -hmm. The father give me the message and I deliver it. Okay. See? And for instance, if I give you this envelope, yeah. and said, deliver it, yeah. you don't know what is inside of it. <laughs> you deliver it, right? That's so, how it feels to you? Yeah, yeah, you true, just true. get something comes down and you just... Yeah, it's it just born within me, you know? Okay. True, true. Thank you. Okay. Thank God for that. And then, what about stuff like Bada? Oh, Bada? Yeah. Yes, well, nine Observer now have, have a label called Observer, you know? And you have a rhythm, I'm saying, Greg, I want to do some pandas with him after me, you know, see And I will sit and listen to the rhythm and just go in at it, you know? So he, he had built that rhythm? Yeah, he had the rhythm first. And I just sing to it. And um, Slave Master, I presume that... Yeah, 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 and I had the dream, yeah. Same way? Yeah, it's the same way, right? Yeah, we did that at Duke Beach Treasure Island. Oh, you did that Treasure Island? Yeah, right, yeah, the rhythm. And 
Wait, you're listening to Anderson, you know? True. And there's a couple DJ piece as well. But Lord know that I don't want to be lonely tonight. Granny know that I don't want to be lonely tonight. I mean it, yes, I mean it. I don't want to be lonely tonight. But I would rather to be lonely than to live. What about, I know you did some stuff at Black Ark. Like, uh, Mr. Cobb. Yeah, right. Same Pete Weston in front of him. Oh, he brought you down there? Yeah, yeah, right. Between Pete Weston and, and Lee Perry, you know? Like, there was a couple on, you know? Did you know Lee Perry from before? Oh, yeah, because the band that I used and my own lover was, was, was Lee Perry. They missed the right. the back of my Yes. Yeah, the upset us, you know? So you knew him from that time? Yeah, yeah. He was on Charles Street to front of the scene. So the man who used to play, he used to play most of the record shots, the man in there. Getting right. the record in the music scene, you know? So when you went down to do Mr. Cop, I mean, again, Mr. Cop just, it has such a sound. And then the whole message, you know, like, yeah. cool down your temper, Mr. Yeah, yeah, Cop. Sure. What would you say about recording it and that whole experience? How did it go? Well, I just go in the front of the scene because they say, the message, have to be delivered from the scene. I've spread the message from the scene, and you see, musically, you can say any what you want. You express yourself from the scene. That's what music gives you the chance to express your feeling. So now, there's an album that comes around that same time that yeah. Pete Weston put out. Yeah. How much of that album did you either voice or create at Black Art? Mm -hmm. You know, well, extra classic. I mean. Yeah, yeah. See, well, extra classic. The one was my song, you know. I produced that song the front of the extra classic and Black and Kill Black. And yeah, Black and Kill them Black. Them through, yeah, those, those through my song, African Muslim, you know. Those, those. Where, where did you record those? Huh? Channel One. A Channel One? Yeah. What about um, some of the other tracks on that? No, album? well, with the road, all I have is love now. I have an album the front of the, see the crooks, see? Mm? Yeah, that's Lodi from the Pioneers, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. I also know you did some backing on the Congos album. Did some backing vocals. Do you remember working with them? On La La Bam Bam? Does that ring a bell? You know the Congos, that group? Yeah, from over every part of the scene. Yeah. Yeah. That group of the scene. Do you remember doing that? Yeah, I sit down the front there really, you know, tease them what I could tease them the front of the scene because they had yeah. a musical vibe the front of the yeah. Congo Rai and That's B. It. Jones and, you know, Cedric, yeah. That's them. True, true. Um, do you, I don't suppose you probably remember a guy called Ray Hereford used to do a magazine Small Axe in England. Yeah, I know that magazine. Okay. Mm -hmm. true, true. When he interviewed you about yeah. 25 years, 20 years ago or something, mm -hmm. you told him, like, you were at the Black Ark recording briefly, but you had to leave out of there because there was too much fornication going on or something. No, yeah. well, I don't quite remember too much fornication. You don't remember that? Seen, yeah, but... You know, Lee Perry himself in front of the scratch, that man a real, you know? Yeah. Seems true, true. So you felt like you had to move on from there? Yeah, true, true. See, I just tried. And what I don't like, I just leave, you know? Okay. True. Okay. What about now the album, um, you know, the, the Party in the Slum? Yeah. And then you that did... was produced by me, too, see? Yeah. I've got them, yeah. And you did that slum dub? Yeah. And is it Jamie's mixing that or something? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, sure. What what inspired you again to do to have the dubs? You know. No, well, I just the, the thing that is trying to produce the album different the scene. Uh -huh. But I'd have my version amongst me called Lego Beast. Yes. What's his me different the scene? Yes. So I give him the dub version to put out. You know. You don't work with Lego uh, for a long time, no. I'm a good version, man. He's still he's still yeah. friends. Yeah, man, yeah. good friend, man. Yeah. I'm going there when I leave here. Yeah, good good friend, man. Yeah, them up for me, got it too. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do that. I'm brave with them, yeah. Okay. A bit later now, like when you hook up with Virgin, yeah, and you kind of, in a way, you kind of change your image a bit, like the Lonely Lover kind of thing, and you know. No, don't don't say really change the front of the scene. Lonely Lover, I produced that album too, yeah, and that was got by by Charisma. Right. Oh you yeah, think? Charisma. Sorry. I yes. did. Yeah, the album, True Forward album. Yes. I did that and, forward, and, yeah, Virgin, produced that yeah. and give it to Virgin and. Is is it true that that song Uncle Joe? Was it was it meant to be aimed at Joe Gibbs or was no, it no 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 like no that? no not like that you know seeing so I was on good road still you know what I'm saying just lyrics you're just speaking metaphorically yeah yeah lyrics it true, could true. have been Uncle true. Bill or yeah whatever. anybody true true okay 
Mm -hmm. Okay, because people say that was meant to be... Uh, no, 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 no. Nothing like that. No, no, no. Okay, there's another song I forgot to ask you about, which is One One Coco from yeah. Glenn Brown. Yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> Glenn, eh? Yeah. Yeah. How did that link come about? Now, Glenn, well, Glenn Brown, another man where... Remember who moved in the music business in the front of the scene, and mm -hmm. Trembler really liked something to be done in the front of the scene. He would do something for me and do something for him, and, you know, mm -hmm. I love to do it. So he just, as he did, you, you lick a tune for him, you get a rhythm from him or something like None that? No, not a rhythm in the front I just lick a tune for him, too. He was he, supposed to lick one for me, too, but I never really... You didn't take it up? Yeah, I never really had to think true, true. So is that the only song you voiced for him? Yeah, I said so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. If I don't have you, then for me there'll be nobody else. No, oh no, no. And even if the trees should touch the sky, for me there'll be nobody else. ask you about this I mean if you don't want to talk about it fair enough but I know in the early 80s there was a guy down here Mike Keisha yeah. from the States yeah and then he was telling me he was here and you got arrested on some yeah Mike is a good friend of mine um, you know I spoke with him that day. did you yeah okay sure. so I mean can I ask you what happened with all of that you, you, you went to the gun court or something yeah yeah, yeah yeah I was a tenant all of them guys there with you know you come again? Oh, you were, yeah, right. Yes, and For what, a couple of months or something? Yes, and, and then they transferred me to General Penitentiary. Oh, really? From Harvard to Gun Court to General Penitentiary, you can see. Well, I'm sure I have a two gun, yeah? Oh, two guns. Two guns, yeah, see. And I mean, you, you, you had those on, at somewhere where you lived or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, any particular reason or just because they were there? No, because now you see. So all the time you really are around the family and time they're not seen. Yeah. You have to protect yourself, you understand? Seeing so that's yeah. the reason I really had them for protection, not to do nothing, you know? So, but, but the law said you have them, so you go. Yeah, it's true, because there's a lie, it's a real lie, you know, sir. Right. So, yeah. so. And then, I mean, would you say since that time, did you kind of go through a rough period, or? You yeah, know? well, I've been through a lot of different things. You know, the father said, these are those that pass through dread tribulation. Uh -huh. So. Uh -huh. I've got to universal tribulation, then, so, then like that, you know. And then, like, later, like, the song Rumors, yeah. which, like, you kind of bounce back, I mean, true, you true. go back right on top. True, true. What, again, what would you tell me about doing that song? Or? Well, it's a sad song, you know? So what about, I mean, in, in those days, yeah. it was, like, purely computer. I mean, that song, you know, I can't, there's, no, there's no live instrument on it at all. True, true. How do you feel about that change happening and why do you think it happened at that time? Well, I don't see it differently, I don't see it, you know. I love the live music, I like drumming, I've seen, but as time goes by, different, the people get more advanced than the world. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. So I left it just over the time, you know. So you just rolled with it? Yeah, rolled with the time, yeah, true, true. Did you do some other stuff that was recorded, that was, wait a minute, music works or yeah, something? Yeah, that's music works, rumors of music works on the front of the scene. Something like a red was for great with the front of the scene. I had a lot of tunes in the scene, we the bread in the scene, yeah. And what about when you had the album and it came out and it had like, this kind of like, scales with like this kind of drugs thing? Well, as a producer, I do that differently, you understand? That wasn't your concept? No, that was my concept in the scene. You don't release it from me, because fire and I believe it's really different. It's fire and I go see that, you know? Oh, I see, so, yeah. I see, I so. see. What about, I mean, I do read about this. You know, and again, I mean, no disrespect, and if you don't, yeah. you know, whatever, but, yeah. you know, people say, I mean, like, you, you, you had a problem with drugs, or... Uh, yes, I, I used to deal with drugs in front of the scene. It's not nothing good still, right? But it was the greatest college I've ever been, but the most expensive school I've ever been. I but see. in high school, you know? So, you know, I learned a lot, and I feel a lot through it, you know? Yeah, so, so... Why do you think you had to go through that? I mean, it's kind of hard for us to picture... No, 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 really, I a fall of fashion. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What, everybody was doing it, so you said, let me try yeah, it? No, friend introduced it to me, you know? Oh. And I uh, fuck around with the front of the scene. Right. And I learned from that, you know? Because, you know, I mean, from very us... They are very dangerous. Sorry? It is very dangerous, very dangerous. you know? So true. Yeah. I mean, it's hard for us as outsiders to understand. I mean, yeah. you, you were like, kind of like a number one singer. I mean, you were at the top. Yeah. And then you were also, man, you know, 
You had very long locks. You were obviously religious in yeah, your work. Yeah, but yeah, right, yeah. So, so it, but it's only a good sheep can change its wool. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just saying it's it's a just good sheep. Yeah, they change the wool and grow fresh wool. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah, true. So you're saying these these days you don't mix up in that? Well, I live up to the basic principle and I'm a lot of Rastafari I still, you understand? Same too, well, and dreadlock is also and trimming and cone. That's why I get dreadlocks in. A man do have to have dreadlocks, a man, a, a man, we have a, some, you have some man have dreadlocks and he's not Rasta, you know? Sure. Some man do it as a style, you understand? Yes, I do. So what are you working on right now? Well, I have some nice stuff in front of the scene. I did we give you the album that I did in front of the car, team, Crafts and Confidential. Okay. I have a nice album in front of coming out soon, you know, some nice tracks. What's that going to be called? Mm. Mm? What's what's that supposed to be called? The the new one. Is I don't name? I don't give a name. I don't know anything. Where where are you working? Where are you recording mm. that? Right in my little studio here, PPR studio, four people recording studio. Oh, okay. See? How long has yeah. that been up and running? Yeah, about two years now, yeah. And who else have you recorded down here? Quite a lot different the scene. Oh yeah. And, yeah, quite a lot. General Street, different the Mellow Dems. Oh we really? Got a new album with them soon, and, yeah. Oh yeah. Son Kevin Isaacs and. EQs and old passes. Your son is a singer as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I heard one track. Mm, sure, so sure, yeah. It. And we put out an album called Father and Son with me and him. Okay. And we're in the States and, yeah. Now, two, two years ago when I passed through here, I saw you at Countryside Club. Yeah. And I have to say, it was pretty astounding. I mean, you know, you had the audience in the palm of your hand and you, you just kind of murdered everybody. And I was, personally, I was surprised. Cause I Why are you surprised? I don't know. People, uh, people have told me, oh, you know, Gregory is no good anymore, and blah blah. When blah, people blah. can say anything differently in the scene, yeah, that people are different in the scene, yeah, yeah. But to hear about men know me is two different things. True, true. Right. <laughs> All right. So, but so when when you go to do a show like that, I mean, is it hard for you to like? You know, muster up the energy to do it all over again? Cause no, you know, not really hard to run the scene. I just go. I, I always ready for my work. If I sleep and wake up, I read at the same time. That's me. You know? True. Okay. I love my work, you know? I love pleasing the people. See? Mm -hmm. True. Well, of all the music that you've done, I mean, I'll just to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Of all the music that you've done, are there any that you're particularly proud of or that stick out? To I'm you? proud of a lot of them to run the scene, but the best is not yet to come, you know? To come. True. And I would like to tell all the people to live up with love, because only love can conquer war. Only love can conquer war. Only love can conquer war. Love can conquer war. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and share. For more information, visit jetstar.co.uk. I'm not in a position to maintain you. The way that you're accustomed to. Take you out to fancy places Like all the fellas that I know can do I'm only able to romance you And to make you tingle with the light I'm a